Hello everybody, welcome back to RimWorld 1.0 tutorial session. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the workbench. It's going to be a little bit of a grind talking about the workbenches, but it will help you set up your colony better knowing what they do. Um, a lot of these workbenches will only open after you've done the research for them, so I've had to go into God mode right here. Um, I would recommend never going into God mode just because it takes away the fun of the game. Uh, but for this particular tutorial session, I would have to wait until the end of all of the research in order to show you. This is just for me to get a chance to show you what to expect out of the research. Uh, so please do yourself a favor. I'm not even going to tell you how to get into that development mode because it takes away the fun of the game. It really, really does. I don't like doing this. As a matter of fact, I have not saved. I laid all this stuff down and as soon as we get done, I am going to go back to the last save where all of this is gone. So I won't even get the, the resources from it. This is just for the tutorial purposes. Okay. We... Okay, right now, as you saw, we put in our research bench. It's the basic research bench. What you can do is later on, you can upgrade to the upgraded research bench, which is right here. Not right there, right here. Sorry, my bad. Uh, that needs to go over here. And let's just deconstruct that for the purposes of not being confused. Okay, uh, upgraded research bank. It actually looks a whole lot alike. Um, this allows you to go to higher tier research. And when I say that, after you get to a certain point, usually right here at the microelectronics phase, you have to have a, a stronger research bench to help you get the rest of the stuff on here. Uh, so that's the levels of it. You've got your basic research and your advanced research. Now, in order to go more advanced than that, you have to have the multi-analyzer. Uh, a lot of stuff goes into building this. Plasteel, gold. Uh, so if you find a little bit of gold on your map, hold on to it. You will need it. Um, the next phase I wish to talk about, that is the research. Let's go into the kitchen right quick. We have got our electric stove and our fuel stove. Fuel stove is probably the easiest one to use when you first start out. Before you even put in electricity, you can go ahead and use this one. I usually skip that phase unless I absolutely need to, but this one is just as effective. I mean, I think it's a little bit slower, and as you can see, all this stuff has a work penalty speed because they're outdoors. Your workbenches need to be indoors. Um, you can burn wood in here, make the food, but of course when it runs out of wood, you're going to have to refuel it. Here you don't have to worry about that, it just pulls the electricity, which means your electricity goes out, you can't cook. I would technically say having one of each of these is a good idea. If you have a solar flare which knocks out all of the electricity in your colony, it means you can still do the cooking if you need to. Um, so there's two options. Then you've got this monstrosity right here, which is the nutrient paste dispenser and the hoppers where the food go in. The hoppers need to be next to the food dispenser in order for it to work and it has to be powered. Uh, it puts out nutrient paste. The colonists really don't like the flavor of it. I always, always skip the step. When I first played, I put one of these in. It's just, it's really not worth it. But if you start out a colony where nobody really cooks, this might be the way you need to go because it, it makes it, I don't think they get food poisoning from this at all. It's just nobody likes it. So I, I skip this entirely and I usually put this in along with this. Just right now we don't have the room for it. So I only put in the one. All right. And then you've got the butcher's table and you've got a butcher's spot. Now this one will give you as many resources and it takes longer. This one is usually better. So I usually skip over the spot. It depends on the type of playthrough you're doing. If you're doing a tribal, you'll probably start out with the butcher's spot. Um, and that having been said, uh, you could probably, hold on, where's power, not power, which one is it? Temperature? Yeah, temperature. Campfire. Uh, technically that could be in there as well because you can also set up food bills here and burn apparel and drugs. So this is another one I should have put in, but, um, it can also be considered a gather spot. Um, if you want your colonists going to wherever it's at and standing there for their social time, uh, you could put that in as well. And it does put off heat so it can warm up a larger room. I would not put this in a small bedroom because it will overheat them. But those are options. If you are playing the tribals, you're going to have to start with the fire and the butcher spot. Then you'll be able to put in the butcher table and all that. Um, from there, let's go to the tailoring bench. We've got the electrical and we've got the hand tailoring bench. This one takes a lot longer to make all of your stuff, but it requires no electricity. This one requires electricity. Things go a lot faster. And what you can do here is basically all the basic 
components to all of the stuff. There's also a tailoring spot, isn't there? No, it's the crafting spot, which I put over here. We'll get to that in a second. But anyway, the cowboy hats, the bowler hats, the toques, and everything. Uh, for this particular playthrough, since we're in a temperate climate, it's warm all the time, I would recommend a cowboy hat and the duster. The reason being is the duster and the cowboy hat cool your colonists off. Some people use dusters and cowboy hats when it's cold and I don't understand it. If you look at the... There we go, look at the eye. Um, with the cool, it helps them cool down. It does kind of help with the heat, but really this is the only one that will help with them cooling down. So that would be one thing. Uh, if it's a very cold climate, you can make a parker and a toque, a parka and a toque. And then of course you've got, let's see, the jackets for milder climates. Like right now, people could be wearing a jacket. It's 54 out. Uh, the jacket would work. Uh, yeah, the tailoring speed crafting. Yeah, we don't need to know any of that. Anyway. Uh, then, of course, you've got the tribal wear. Now, the crafting spot allows you to make tribal wear, but that's the only clothes you can make, as far as I know, at the crafting spot. Yeah, tribal wear. So, if you start out with a tribal playthrough, you would have the campfire, the butchering spot, and the crafting spot. And that would be how you would make the smoke leaf joints, the tribal wear, and your, your basic stuff. Your knives, knives, forks, and spoons. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, anyway... So let's see, we've covered these, these, uh, all of these. I probably should have grouped them better, but I just kind of threw them all out. Uh, then we've got the sculptor's table, the crafting spot I just stuck over here because I didn't know where to put it, now I do. Uh, the sculptor's table, they can make artwork to sell or put inside their uh, living spaces or whatever to make the beauty go up a little bit more. You kind of have to have a normal sculpture or above for it to not to negatively affect an area. If they make a poor or awful sculpture, putting it in an area will actually make it look worse. So just deconstruct it and start all over again. Uh, the small sculptures to start with, and then these grand sculptures later on when you use good materials like jade or whatever, sell for a lot of money. Um, and then of course the stone cutters table, and you can make any stone blocks that are on your map, which we talked about the stone on a map during the first part of the game when we decided on where we were gonna live at. So try and pay attention to that, remember it, write it down or whatever, because you don't want to set up to build some stuff and then find out there wasn't very much of that particular resource on the map. Try and figure out which ones belong on your map. Like we did slate, so we've got slates here. Slate here, I would set up to make slate to make the walls. That way you don't have patchwork walls. Um, and then, let's see, we've got the brewery. This is how you make the alcohol for the colony, the... the Let's say the make the wort and the wort goes in here and that makes the fermenting barrel and then it makes the the beer or whatever. And of course the beer is um, addictive and they can suffer withdrawals and they can get uh, cirrhosis of the liver and everything. So while it's got good mood bonuses, there are consequences to using it. And then we've got the drug lab. And right now all we can do is make smoke leaf as you do more research. You can make your medicine, your penicycline. Uh, if you've got the mod, you can make Nutramine. Otherwise, I think you have to buy Nutramine in, in the base game. Um, but we will get into that one more. I've got these two types of power sitting down here, the chem fuel. Um, you can use this up here. I'll get to that in just a second. To make the chem fuel, it works a little bit better than the wood-fired stove because uh, it utilizes it better as far as I'm concerned. But um, you can use either one to start out your power, just like we did down here. We've got this for at night, and we've got these for during the day. And because I don't have any batteries to store up all the electricity, that will help. I did this mainly so I could show you that there are ways of turning it off and on without actually like disconnecting the power. This is a power switch, and you can have them t designate the power off and on, but you have to have the power conduits before and afterwards so they can attach um, I'm not sure if you can see it on screen, but if you look right here, you can see where it's hooked up to. It looks like a little extension cord. And if you click on this, and you can tell it to reconnect to anything that's in its reach, and it will connect here. You just tell them to toggle that off, and anything on this side of it will turn off. That way you're not turning off each individual thing. Might be useful, might not be useful. 
Um, but I'll show you another way that will also help with these things uh, that will be a little bit more immediate. Uh, we've got our wind turbines, our solar generators. There are a couple that I could not lay down because there's not a location here to lay them down. Um, this one is your geothermal. Uh, pumps out a lot of electricity. It's very, very good for keeping your colonists warm. Like if you seal this into a room, uh, you can still use the heat from it. Uh, but this is also very later game because it takes a lot of resources to build those things. All right, and then let's get into the crematorium. Uh, burying the bad guys is probably the easiest way to handle a siege or um, being invaded, being raided, uh, disposing of unsightly corpses because your colonists are affected by the sight of a dead body. They don't like it. They will actually go on mental breaks because they see too many of them. Uh, so burying them is the first option. After a while of so many, there's like a lot of graves you might want to put down a crematorium. It's an easier way of getting rid of the bodies. And technically, you can cremate animal corpses, which there's no real sense in cremating an animal corpse unless it's already bad and you can't use it for cooking. You can burn apparel that is really bad and you can't sell it anyway. And you can burn drugs. So you want to go in a no-drug colony. This is how you can get rid of the drugs without having to sell it. Especially if you've got someone with a chemical interest who might want to take the drugs. And uh, Luciferium being as bad as it is, I would say if you don't have a way of controlling how quickly they're going to get there, burn the drug over allowing someone to take it. Um, that having been said, technically any drugs that are extremely harmful to your colony, you can build yourself a tiny little room and put a stockpile in there, put the drugs in there, and close it off with a wall. That would work too, just un, you know, uninstalled and deconstruct the wall and sell it then if you want to, but this is another option. I just wanted to present that to you. Ah, uh, we've got the smelter! And metal from slag, uh, you're gonna have a lot of slag. I, I don't know if we have any showing on the map so I can show you what it looks like really quick. It's just like a little piece of metal fragment, usually, usually from drop pods. Okay, here we go. Where we had our drop pods. These are the steel metal things. These are useless until you melt them into metal. And it's another way to get steel. I mean, they're just laying there. Why not? And also, you can smelt weapons. Minor weapons, poor weapons. You can set up... Okay, uh, let's see. Like, you don't want to use any spears or maces or whatever after you get further into the game. Or maybe you don't want to use... I don't know. Mini guns are kind of useless in my opinion. They shoot everywhere. It's a lot of bullet spread. It rarely ever hits anything. So you want to melt it down because it's poor quality. Uh, it's degraded a lot. And you're not going to be able to sell it for very much. And in the base game, there's no way to repair it or uh, make the quality any better. So what's the point in keeping it? Uh, you can melt it down and get some of the components back out of it. And by that, I mean possibly actual components and uh, steel. So maybe you'll want to just to just do that and then maybe you want to destroy a weapon say you've got a club made out of wood not very useful for your colony because nobody's using the club and you're not going to get anything back because you can't smelt out wood out of a wooden thing because that's not how that works that's not physics folks it's not physics uh, in which case you just want to clear up your inventory space and you can just destroy the weapon so there is that one now bio refining we can make ooh, we can make a mess that's what we can do Chem fuel from wood or chem fuel from organics. Uh, wood you should have in a lot of biomes, plenty of wood to use, but after a while, especially if you do like a toxic fallout scenario, I mean, toxic fallout hits and it kills everything on the map. It really, really does. Uh, if you run out of wood, you could use the things that you have stored up in your freezer to make the chem fuel. Now uh, you have the chem fuel generator. There's a few other things that could run on chem fuel. So a biofinery might be useful later game. And then we have the fabrication bench. And right now this is make components. It takes a lot of steel. I don't remember precisely how many. Can I find out really quick how many? It is 84 work, 12 steel to make one component as far as I know. I think it just makes one component whenever it does that. But components are very hard to come by. They're usually pretty expensive, and you're eventually going to run out of them on your map. Always happens later game. Um, 
so having this research will definitely help out mid to late game. And then we have the machining table, disassembling mechanoids, which we will probably run into later on, and I'll show you some of the best ways that I know of to deal with the mechanoids, but until then, understand that this is the workbench, the machining table, that allows you to take those things apart and get the components back out of them. Plasteel, steel, sometimes components, uh, how you make your shells for your mortars, fire foam shells, uh, basic helmets, advanced helmets, frags, molotovs, EMP grenades. That's where we make all of these. Then we have the electric and the wood smithy. So let's just look at the electric. Helmets, maces, this is all of your melee weapons basically and simple armor. Um, I would put in a wood smithy, get, your, get all of your colonists weapons, and then I would probably just deconstruct this batch. It really has no use later game. It does not give you the ability to make weapons. That's the machining table. Uh, pistols, assault rifles, whatever are made at the machining table. These are for early game uh, basic weaponry. Unless you've got like, I don't know, a level 14, 15 melee person, then you might want to keep this here and make them a plasteel club or something. That would be the only reason I could think of to keep it. Uh, and just a word about this, tool cabinets, which are in the MISC, yeah, MISC section, actually increase the work speed when placed near other workbenches. Just about all of these, you can see the line showing up in here. It doesn't work for the research bench or the biorefinery, apparently. All of these it's working for. Uh, the smelter it does not seem to be working for. Or the brewery. Or the deep drills. The butchery it does. Okay, and that's all of them. It doesn't work for the kitchen either. Okay. Um, let's see. We did all of these. All of these. Uh, the deep drills. Ground penetrating radar. It shows you where the resources are on your map. And then you set these things over the top of them. And it will clear out the areas around it slowly over time as someone drills at those. And after that section is depleted, you will have to, let's see if we have the ability to uninstall. Yes, we have the ability to uninstall now. Uh, so you can move it around until you get all the resources, but you will have to run power to it. And um, having them, let's see, we have, um, where are all, see there's a lot of resources deep underground here. But say I wanted to mine for whatever this is over here. Uh, can we turn that back on, please? Back on. Um, we would have to run power from our colony all the way over here. If we get attacked, they can attack the drill, they can attack the power conduits and start a fire. So, later game it's necessary and your colonists will be able to defend it easier, but you have to determine what you actually want at that time. And remember, the more resources your colony has of all sorts, including people, count as uh, how rich your colony is. The more rich your colony is, the more you're going to get attacked, the harder you're going to get attacked. So if you see a spot that's got steel in it, but you already have a thousand steel, maybe wait on getting that resource out and go after something else. Uh, so there's that. Oh, and hydroponic space is basically an indoor area, but it has to keep electricity. Uh, during Let's see, toxic fallouts, cold flashes, or cold snaps, and a few other similar conditions. This allows you to produce crops inside, and they grow faster because the fertility is so much higher. But if power is cut for any reason, including a solar flare, they will degrade and die. Uh, so most people will set up... Let's just throw this out really quick and I will show you. They throw in something like these in their colony. Uh, get, get, no, not the auto doors, not the auto doors. Just give me a regular freaking door, please. Okay, and let's see, is it furniture? Yeah, a sun lamp. Um, they will, if these are inside, you're gonna need a sun lamp to help them grow. Not only is it the electronic basin, but it's also a sun lamp. And if you look, the sun lamp takes a lot of power. But a lot of people will do this as opposed because if it loses electricity, the plants in the ground don't die. They just won't get any sun for a while. Uh, so that's one way people get around having to ever use the hydroponic basin. The only thing is, is this has got a lot more fertility. Um, so things will, they will do a whole lot better. That's not part of this. Let's take that out. 
Okay, what are we at next? Okay, I'm going to get more into hospitals later, but uh, you do get the research for a hospital bed and the vitals monitor, both of which give you bonuses. Here we go. Let's see. It's a, eight, a 0.8 comfort and a gain immunity factor. The medical tent offset is plus 10. The restfulness is 100. Chance for sur security. Surgery success is uh, increased and uh, let's see quality is normal they sell for a pretty good bit um and apparently you can put it on a bridge who knew all right so I, I guess you could build your hospital over a lake if you wanted to you know nice calming waters or whatever but this increases your ability to take care of your patients and the work on this is steel and medicine um you can also do it other other stuff i i can't remember no, I think that one has to be made out of steel. Regular beds, you can use uh, stone and stuff to make. They're not as comfortable, but you can if you're in an area that doesn't have a whole lot of wood like the desert. And then, of course, the vital monitors, which uh, 10 quality offset is plus 7. Immunity gain speed is plus 2. And surgery chance factor is plus 5. So this increases the use of the bed. And then we have our cryo sleep casket, which right now contains nothing, thankfully. But say a character catches a disease, like, uh, okay, you start a brewery and um, someone gets cirrhosis of the liver, but it's a very good colonist. You put them in here and let them sleep until you can purchase a, an, another liver. Because in game, as far as I know, there's no way to pr produce those. I don't know. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't know whether or not later research allows that. Let's take a look. In this particular line of research, can we eventually learn any type of bionics? I don't see it. Oh yeah, they have bionics in it. Okay, so whenever you learn bionics, it should help you produce some things like um, arms, legs, you can get prosthetics. People are going to get injured in your game. The fights are brutal. People lose arms, legs, fingers, toes, noses, ears jaws i mean you name it people get shot in the kidneys all the time which you know affects their health but anyway uh should something like that happen this is a research you can get to hopefully help them stay alive long enough for you to research something that you need or buy what you need so uh, there's that then later on you get a comms console that allows you to contact orbital ships or you can call in other people let's see on our world We are right here in the boonies. Say we want to contact the Conjurers or some other group and call in and call in perhaps a trade caravan or something. That's how you would do it now in order to get a caravan to come to you. They're going to have to like you and not just be neutral with them. They're going to have to like you. So you can send them gifts. You can send them money. Um, you can call in for aid from this. But remember, whenever you have this, if you want to trade something with an orbital trade ship, you're going to have to have orbital trade beacons. Now, the way these work is if you set one outside, whenever they drop stuff off, it'll land in this area. If you have them inside a building, say, I wanted to trade something from out of here. My silver's going to be in here, right? I would need to put an orbital trade beacon in here. And if you'll see, it covers the whole thing. It tells you how far it will go. So I would need to set one in the center so I would be able to use my silver. Say I wanted to sell my meals, which in the base game right now you can no longer sell your meals, so this is useless. But um, you would need one in each one of the stockpiles you wish to sell from. And that's how they work. So I would say one in your stockpile where you plan to sell from. If you have more than one stockpile, like we want to put um, leathers and stuff over here, we would have one in that stockpile. Say I decided to divide up and put all my steel somewhere else, I would put it in that stockpile. And that's kind of how that works. And then put one outside so you can control where it's landing whenever it comes in. You don't want them throwing it out just in random places because there's been plenty of times they've given me whatever it was I bought and I couldn't find it. For the life of me, could not figure out where it dropped on my map. So if you put one outside, you can control where the drop zone is. And then last but not least, we have got the pod launcher and the actual pod. Cute, right? Okay, uh, you have to fill these things with chem fuel, so whenever you decide to use these, the biorefinery is definitely going to be necessary. 
Um, and the pod launchers allow you to transport yourself and whatever your cargo is across the map a certain amount of squares, depending on your uh, level of fuel. Now, they don't go a huge distance. There are mods that lengthen the amount of distance for your pod launchers. Um, you will get... Uh, let's see, you will get... I don't know, like two or three quests, probably people asking for you to make stuff for them and they'll give you stuff. Sadly, in game, you have to have someone travel with your pod in order to drop those off. You get a quest for 20 pairs of pants, good or better. You have to load, well, first you have to make the 20 pairs of pants, then you have to load them into the pod and send somebody along with it, which means you, then you have to get the person back, so you gotta take food. Um, sadly, you can't just drop the pot over there and then them drop the gold back or silver back for you. Uh, it would be nice if it worked that way, but it doesn't. If you send it off and nobody's in it, you just lose the pot and whatever fuel you put into it. So be aware of that. Um, I found that out the hard way whenever they first introduced those things and I was able to learn how to do them. Um, oh, well, I guess we could go ahead and talk about this as well. The fire foam popper. Uh, you set this in areas where things have a tendency of catching on fire, like a hydroponics room would probably be a good idea. Or uh, inside your food area, having a fire foam popper would help because it stops. As soon as the fire reaches the fire foam popper, it explodes and puts the fire out for you. Uh, a little expensive to make, but definitely worth it in areas where you definitely do not want anything burning it. Hydroponics basins are expensive and expensive to run, so you don't want those to burn. Your food, you don't want your colonists going hungry. So, two good places to put it, plus maybe in a stockpile room as well. Uh, moisture pumps. Say you get into... Do we have any here? Well, yeah. Right here. Um, after you learn how to do it, you could set these things in and it will slow incrementally going out, dry up the region. Now, it does not take care of deep water. As far as I know, that's never changed. But it will dry up some of the water. So if you didn't want the lake in the middle of your colony or whatever, you could dry it up to the deep water and that would be it. Uh, if you have swampy land, you could put it in there and take care of the swampy land. Um, let me say, is there anything else? Uh, we'll go over recreation later. Uh, ship parts will go in a different one, and I say that because I still haven't actually played around with the ship parts. I want to kind of play around with it and take a look at it. Um, oh yeah, vents. Let's throw that out. Coolers. Heaters. Passive cooler, and we already have a fire thing here. Uh, passive coolers, 50 in 5 days, meaning this is going to stop working, basically deconstructing itself or whatever you want to call it. Um, after five days and uh, really it has to do with how hot it is outside and the size of the room as to how effective these things are if you're playing in a tribal playthrough this is one of the researches I think you either start with or you can learn quickly and it's the only way to cool your colony until after you learn electricity so if you're playing a tribal playthrough this is going to help cool your colony off uh, heaters and coolers heaters uh, you can do designate the tide designate them off and on for whenever it's hot or cold outside you don't want them running when it's already warm outside big waste uh, you can change the temperatures typically it starts out it's set as 70 degrees Fahrenheit um, if you want to lower it like your colonists are okay at 69 or you've got parkas on everybody you don't need them quite that warm and you might be able to save a bit of power uh, and then same thing for the cooler say you want to keep something refrigerated it's something that you might want to just keep refrigerated would be things like hay or what's something else herbal medicine herbal medicine takes a long time for it to degrade uh or spoil rather but um it still takes a long time but you don't want it to go bad before you have a chance to use it so you might want to just refrigerate it and last a couple of years um uh your stuff in your refrigerator on the other hand let's take a look because i still haven't messed with these i haven't set the temperature not refrigerated spools in 39 days 39 days may seem like a lot, but in actuality it's not. So this is how we take care of that. Let's reduce down to, what is that, 16? I'm going to go down to negative 2. Let's give it a second and see what happens. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Now indoors it is 3, 2, 0, 1, negative 2. Okay. And I have got like a... 
I guess you could say like a uh, b- uh, b- uh, mine is going blank. Anyway, uh, the purpose is is to stop the cold air from escaping. Um, I'll think of the word later on and feel like a dumbass for not having thought about it. But anyway, uh, all of your freezers, coolers, or whatever, you should probably double wall, or if you've got the space, do the wall, space, and wall, which is a little bit more effective, though I found that this is, you know, it's okay. It's good enough. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's coolers. And that's how you operate those. You can reset, you can go up by a couple of degrees, and you can power the temperatures off. I mean, whatever works. And then you've got the vents, which allows the cool air or hot air to be vented in between each one of them. After we get to the certain point that we need, what I'm going to do is disassemble these little sections right here, which is the reason why I built them this way, and put a vent in between each one of them, and put an AC on one end and a heater on another end. And then we can alternate, and the hot and cold will vent between each one of them. I don't have to have quite as many. Now, remember, that is, you know, according to the space, you might need more than one heater or more than one cooler in order to get the job done. You'll just have to pay attention to the temperature that it is. And I think that is it. What else can we dig up out of here to take a look at really quick? We'll take a look at security later. Uh, furniture, the only thing I would say that probably needs to be brought out is that... And well, bedrolls, I mean, we can throw one of these out right quick. Uh, bedrolls, you can drop those down, have your colony build them after you get some leathers or some cotton, and then have them uninstall it and put it in the stockpile. Whenever we start talking about caravanning, having these will boost everybody's mood a lot. And then, of course, we did a sun lamp over there just a second ago. Uh, for beds, having these two things offset comfort and beauty in a room. So even though we've got small rooms in this playthrough, those two will help. Uh, we've got different armchairs, and obviously everything that you build that has a quality to it, the better the quality, the more impressive it is. So when you're first starting in a colony, um, their construction level is going to be very low. Later on, after you get the construction level up, you have more resources, maybe go back in and build them again and keep rebuilding them until you get normal or better or good or better try and go for something like that would be my uh thought on those and it also goes according to this and uh, let's put these side by side all right uh this is normal this is normal but if we take a look beauty is two on this what is it on this one Beauty is too, it's normal, but the impressiveness because of what it's made out of changes for the colonists. So that that's later game, but it's it's good to know that things can change quality because of the material you decide to use. Like stone, marble on this would be very impressive to your colonists. Uh, that is all of the workbenches. I am looking really quick. Workbenches, things to remember for the workbenches. Okay, all right, now let's quickly get into research, things that we want to take a look at. Types of research, I say drug protection first. Uh, well, I don't want to tell you to do it right now because I'm afraid it's going to accidentally do it for us and I don't want to do that. Uh, Pemmican, if you wanted to travel early in the game, which, you know, has its theories, you may, it may be good, it may be bad. I would always recommend saving before you travel anyway. All right, I would recommend that if you're playing with the tribal that you don't necessarily jump into learning electricity, and I say that because if you're starting with tribal, you're kind of wanting to take the slow road with your colonists. So I would probably go after like pemmican, which I think they actually start with pemmican and uh, beer brewing, but I think that's all they start with that this one doesn't start with. I would go after smithing and then the long blades, plate armor, and the bows. Definitely the bows because it's how they're gonna be hunting to start with. And then, after you get all of that stuff done, then I would move into the electricity to, sh to try and stretch out that beginning part of the playthrough. It does make it a very, a very interesting start. Um, but just understand that if you do play with that st type of start, the types of raids that you will be getting may introduce weapons you're not wanting your people to have just yet. Pistols or whatever. Um, so... Maybe you want to burn the weapons, maybe you want them to find the technology and appropriate the technology, depending on which way you want to play. Uh, electricity, we start with air conditioning. I would definitely go for batteries next because, well, you need to be able to store some of the electricity, especially early game. It gets such a pain in the butt to try and store the electricity, get enough electricity for all the new things. Uh, machining, gunsmithing, all of this stuff 
mid game are going to be very very essential to try and protect your colonists we've got prosthetics and that should tell you that people can get hurt seriously and it's not just that they get hurt it affects the colonists view of them and it affects their ability to do certain things like uh, if my shooter got shot in the eye, suddenly their ability to shoot actually goes down. This game takes that as, as a factor in their shooting ability. Um, if there's a broken finger on a doctor, their surgery skill goes down. So those are definitely things to learn. Um, sterile tiles are no longer a base game. You don't start with those. But in your hospital and inside the cooking area, I would recommend learning that for those two things. Uh, the rest of these, just research them as you feel the need for it. There's a lot of cosmetic things like colored lights, carpets. Carpets do have a beauty, will increase their moods, um, but they're not necessary to start with. Then we got the turrets. There's a lot of new things about the turrets. We'll get into that when we get into security. Uh, the long, re main, long range mineral scanner, definitely for late game. The multi analyzer. And then, of course, all of the, this is like advanced gaming. This is. Uh, past the first level where you get a decent sized colony, you're well into your research, you've gotten raided quite a few times, maybe even gone on a couple of caravans, that is definitely here. And this is towards the end game stuff, the Star Flight Basics. This is how you get off your world. One of two ways, actually. Um, in this particular version, whenever you want to leave the planet, you can either build your own starship, which is pretty cool, or you can go to a specific place on the map where a starship is waiting for you, and you just have to get to the square. You don't have to go into it and do anything, you just get to the square and they go off planet. Um, now when you build your own ship, not only do you have to get all of the resources for building the ship, take the time to build the ship. For 15 days from the time you activate the ship, it is going to send out a distress beacon or a beacon to surrounding places and they will attack you for 15 days. Uh, so, well, not necessarily attack you straight for 15 days. I haven't gotten to this part and I can't wait to get to this part on my playthrough. If you haven't checked out, check it out. Um, when we get to this part, I'm definitely going to try and build my own ship because I've never built the ship. I've always tried to go for the flag. And uh, because there's actually the element of them having to come in and attack me for 15, how strong do the defenses need to be in order to repel 15 days worth of attacks and then get off world? So a lot of resources, there's going to be some resistance to you getting off the planet. So you need to have the very best security going. All of your pawns, and my, I call them colonists. Uh, a lot of people call them pawns because they kind of look like pawns, but I like calling them my colonists. Um, so essentially you're going to have to have your security tight. You're probably going to have to have walls. You may or may not opt for a kill zone, and I'll show you some of the kill zones I've produced before and uh, give you some pointers. Some people are completely against the kill zone. I think it's probably the best defense option, especially if you're planning on going for the ship. Um, but that is eat. Let's go back to load and let's load. Okay, and then we're going to turn that mode off. Nobody peek! Okay, that mode is off. Now we are back to the way we were, no unnecessary resources dropped on the map, and we are good to go for the next video. Um, so that's all the workbenches, it's kind of dry information, but whenever you stop and think about all the stuff that you can make with it, you kind of know where you want to set those rooms up. The resources you're going to need to ne have near them, and the ones that are going to be kind of a pain and you're going to need to protect because they cost too much to allow them to get destroyed. Multi-analyzer being one of them, plasteel and gold, not really easy to get in the base game. Um, actually not easy to get in general. So, I mean, you have to buy gold unless you're lucky enough to find it on your map. And Plasteel is very hard to mine and it is expensive. So those are things that you are going to want to protect. So you don't want to stick them just anywhere. Uh, you definitely don't want to stick them near your exit where you're planning on having bad guys come in. Uh, your power sources... Your power sources, you know you're going to want to defend them because they're going to cost so many. Uh, you know from looking at some of these workbenches that you're going to need like specific work zones to keep them from going across the map looking for the resources to do whatever it is. Uh, tailoring bench next to the leathers, next to the area where you can actually drop off the finished product saves time. Um, 
someplace where they're building the weapons, you have to steal and components and stuff stored next to them, next to the weapons depot where they drop them off. All of those will help out, and I didn't actually show you guys what... What was it under? Miscellaneous? No. Okay, the wooden shelf. I set that out and didn't even talk about it. Uh, the wooden shelf allows you to store stuff on there. Now, the things that can be stored in there, I think, are somewhat limited. But you can store there, and they won't degrade while they're outside. Uh, it's kind of like a shelf. It's actually more like a cabinet. Uh, it protects it from the elements. You can put your weapons in here, put it up near your exit or whatever, and you can weapon people up before they go out. Um, a word about weapon placement. Make sure, and I think it really goes without saying, but I have made the mistake before in a playthrough. Don't put your weapons cache anywhere near your prisons. Your prisoners will escape at some point or another because they have a tendency to try and do that at least once. Uh, they will go in there and pick up a weapon and start firing at you. So make sure that you decide on doing that some other, where, some other place other than that. Um, and I think that's it. We covered everything. Dry information, but necessary for planning the next phase of this. And I hope you are here with me. If you haven't already, hit that like button. If you haven't checked out my actual series, um, I would definitely recommend that. And if you have any ideas for things or questions, comments, inquiries about things that you would like to see on this tutorial, just let me know. I do have a list of things I'm going to cover, but um, I never know what people actually have questions about unless you ask. And I can specifically design one to include the information, or if I can't include it with something else, make a, a video all about that in particular. Um, also, if you want to be included in my next colony, I do name my colonists. Um, and if you're part of the tutorial session, maybe you would like one of your names to be on here. Uh, though I don't think the tutorial is going to be going on hugely long time. I have got six videos planned. We'll see whether or not we add any more to it as we explore more about RimWorld, this complicated game. I will see you next time. You have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, and you stay shiny.